Hello, welcome to A Moment in Time with Taylor. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to use Periscope Live, which is basically like Twitter Live. So Twitter owns Periscope, which was an independent app that is just for live streaming. And now they've integrated into their app. So I'm going to show you both. I'm actually gonna start with showing you how to go live on Twitter because it's a lot more direct and straightforward. This is not a broadcast about how to use Twitter. So if you need to know how to use Twitter, you can check out a different video for that. But once you have your Twitter account, uh, the way that you, well, first let me show you. So if you follow anyone who live streams on Twitter, you will see them at the top of your Twitter feed. So if you scroll all the way to the top of your news feed, which you should default to when you open your Twitter page, it's this little house button on the bottom. You can scroll to the top of that and you'll see who you follow that's live right now. It also has a show more button, but when you click that button, it basically brings you to the For You page, which is just like what's basically trending for you, what Twitter thinks you want to see on there. So. Anyway, when you go to tweet out, when you go to make a tweet, this is how you can go live as well. So you can just make your normal tweet, or instead of that, you can click this camera button, which would normally be to take a picture or a video, but you also have the option down here of going live. So hopefully you can see that little button there, live, click that. And then you put in your title. Ooh. <laughs> It's a little bit trippy. <laughs> you put in your title. You can put out your location. You can look, let me show you these buttons on the top here. So this one on the left, if you click that button, it'll actually turn the flashlight on on your camera so that you have a, a flash, basically a light on your live stream, which is kind of cool, but it only works for the for rear facing stream, which normally I, I use front facing camera for mine. And if you sw switch the camera, here to front facing, that's you guys. Then when you click the, the flash button, nothing happens. So just a, a little note on that. This little microphone button is audio only. If you click that, the video will go away completely and it will become an audio only live stream, which is kind of similar to a podcast, except it's not edited, it's totally live and people can come in and comment on it live. The button all the way to the right is guests. It defaults to being on, but if you click it, you can turn it off and no guests will be allowed to call in to your broadcast. This means other people can guest in and call in to your broadcast while you're live. You can turn that on or off. When it's on, you'll see this button above the go live button that says invite guests. If you click that, you can actually direct message people that you're connected with on Twitter and ask them to, it'll actually message them and say, hey, I'm going live come be a guest on my live stream on Twitter, which is pretty cool. And then you just click go live. And that's how you go live from Twitter. Very straightforward, very, very easy to do. And it uses the Periscope platform. So if you don't already have Periscope, the first thing you need to do is download the app. So it looks like this in the App Store or on the Google Play Store. It has this icon, it's called Periscope Live Video, and you can download it right from the App Store or Google Play Store completely for free. Once you have it, you'll open the app and then you have to create an account. So you'll have two prompts to either log in or create an account. First, you have to create an account and I highly recommend that you connect it to your Twitter account. It's just an easier way. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's the same company virtually, so they work really well together. And it's a great way to prevent yourself from losing your account if you use your phone number. They do have an option to create an account using a phone number, but if your phone number ever changes, it's very difficult to get your Periscope account back. I've heard of a few people doing it, but for the most part, it's very, very difficult to do. So you'll hit create new account, make your account. You can link it, I believe, with Facebook, Google, uh, Twitter, and your phone number something like that. And maybe it'll change by the time you're watching this video, but I think that's pretty straightforward. Uh, and then when you're ready, you'll log in. So I'm just going to click log back in on mine, which is below that. Yeah, those are the options there. It also says sign in with Apple, which I've never done. <laughs> And you may need to click Authorize Periscope to access your account at the bottom, which is your Twitter page. You must scroll to the bottom before this button there will turn blue. Authorize app, you can read through all of that. And then there you go, 
you are on Periscope. Now, I follow people, so my home screen is going to look a little different than yours before you're following anyone, but I'm going to start with just setting up your own profile, which is actually the button all the way to the right on the bottom. It looks like two people next to each other, this button right here. When you go in there, you'll have some suggestions of people that you're following on Twitter that you may want to follow on Periscope as well. And then you'll see in the upper right hand corner, this button right here, which looks like a little person with a circle around it. Click that. Sorry, my camera is reversed. It's a little tricky. There we go. And here you'll just see like a gray person because at first you won't have a profile picture. It'll just be a gray little shadowy figure. So you click edit in the upper right hand corner. And here's where you can edit your profile picture by simply tapping the picture and picking whatever picture you want. You can take a picture or you can use one from your phone. Here's where you could change the name of your account. So I use my, it's a business account that I use it for. So I just use Next Juice for both because that's the name of my brand and my business. But I, my name's Taylor, so I could have Taylor here and then Next Juice here doesn't really matter but for you you might want to put your real name or whatever name you use on online and then your username below and then your bio so mine just says I go live every day and it has the link to my account you can put whatever you want in there just a little bit about yourself some people put where they're from how old they are what their interests what their interests are whatever you want to put in there just a little something because when you go into a broadcast if you have no profile picture if you have no bio description it'll i think it'll say user has not provided a profile description it makes you seem like you know <laughs> you it's it's hard to really connect with you and you could be viewed as potentially a, a potential troll uh, which is a kind of an internet term for someone who's like a cyber bully or someone who doesn't have the best intentions at heart so by putting a picture and a little description it makes you integrate a little bit more smoothly into the community if that's what you're looking to do what I do like about Periscope is that your username, your actual username, your handle for your account, you can change up to two times every 30 days. So don't worry about picking the perfect username, the perfect handle, just whatever you want for now and you can always change it. I personally would recommend against using, you know, first and last name, any kind of personal information, your birthday, um, things out there that might make it easier to, you know, things that might put your privacy and your security at risk. So. Keep that in mind when you're making your account. When you have all this set up, you're ready to go. You just click done on the bottom. And there you go. You'll see everything right up here. Your picture, your name, your username, and your bio. If you put a link in your bio, it will only be clickable if you are a Periscope VIP. If you don't know what that means or how to do that, you can get my ebook, which is called How to Make Money on Periscope. It's on my website, nextjuice.com, and the shop. You can go ahead and get a copy of that if you wanna really learn how to make money on Periscope specifically, especially for a business or a brand. But this video here is just a basic intro as to how to use Periscope as both a viewer and as a broadcaster. So here's what else you can see from this screen while we're here. And again, this is the two people on the bottom of the screen. When you click that, you'll land here. So you'll be able to see the number of hearts you've received in your broadcast. You'll see this star number. That's the number of super hearts you've received in your broadcast. And that is money. That's the monetized feature of Periscope. You'll see this number, which is the amount of coins you have, which is what you use to buy the virtual currency of super hearts. You'll see how many groups you're part of, and these are all clickable, so you can click in here and see more details about all of this. You'll see how many people you're following, how many people follow you, how many people you have blocked, how many, re these are your replays, basically your broadcasts, your recently watched broadcasts. So say you were watching a broadcast and you forgot to follow them and you wanna go back and see, oh, who was that? You can actually go into recently watched and click in there and um, follow them or, or you know, check out the broadcast again if you want. Your super fans, these are the people who watch your broadcast more than anyone else. I'll show you that real quick. It'll actually show you the top 10 users who watch your broadcast more than anybody else. And you can see who you are a super fan of on the bottom as well. Stars, you'll click to go look at, like I said, the stars up here, your super hearts, the amount of money that you've made through in-app uh, super hearts 
or the, I should say the amount of super hearts you've made. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to make money off of those. Again, if you want to get my ebook in terms of monetization, you can go check that out. You'll see comment moderation. I am gonna go into this really quick and just recommend how I suggest that you have these settings. I suggest that you have your settings just like I have mine. I would suggest you turn viewer voting off. You can set moderators here. The only way that you can set a moderator, which is someone who has the ability to mute a comment and mute a person from being able to speak and comment in your broadcast is if you both follow each other. So when you first start off, one, you probably don't even need moderators unless you're already famous and you're going to have a lot of comments coming in. Um, but two, you won't really be following anyone. No one will be following you yet. So it'll be you won't be able to set that up yet. But once you have your community and you've connected with some people, you know, make sure you really trust the people who you want to be your moderators. And again, I go into that in a lot more detail in my ebook, so I won't get into that now. Here, I would turn off I want to vote. And I like to be a moderator. I like to help people out by moderating and muting for them. So I have that turned on. That's your choice whether or not you want to do that. You can see how many people have you set as a moderator. For me, it's 58. And those are the comment moderation. So viewer voting, I don't want to get into that again. It's in my ebook as to why I don't like it. Uh, but it's just a kind of a quirky feature that's easily abused and, and misused. So I would suggest just having the voting features off and having actual moderators, specific moderators who can moderate for your broadcasts and if you want to moderate for other people's broadcasts as well. <clears throat> you have your notification settings, your regular settings. Let's just go in there real quick. And you, this is really, I mean, this is all your own personal preference for all of this. Um, video stabilization, I believe, defaults to being on, but I would suggest that you do use that. I have a separate video about how to use Periscope Producer and how to broadcast from third-party devices like a computer. So that's what Periscope Producer is for. I won't get into that in this video. Uh, I don't suggest having this ever turned on because if you delete a broadcast, all your super hearts are lost as well as the video itself. And you may want to use the video in the future. Your choice if you want to accept super hearts or not, if you want to auto save or save in high definition to your camera roll after your broadcasts are over, if you want to auto accept group invites, I like having that on. I don't like manually having to accept every group invite I receive because then I might miss some broadcasts. Um, oh. Oh, see, this is this is tricky, actually. So this comment moderation, I want to moderate, moderate my broadcast. This is actually about voting. This is for voting. So even though it looks like it's I want to moderate, do not click that. You want these off. Again, your personal preference and your choice, but I choose to have these off in this in the actual settings. I like having audio background, that's your choice. Large comments, autoplay, preferred languages. Clear your cache. If you're having trouble with your app, clearing the cache might be better, uh, might be an easier fix than having to completely uninstall it. Super fans, Facebook friend list, broadcast similar to those you've watched before, surveys, your account, if you want to deactivate or log out, everything is right in there in your settings. I just clicked the back button. Sorry, let me show you. Let me not click any buttons without saying what button I'm clicking right here. I just click that button to go back to where we were. Below settings, you have your connected accounts. That's like your Facebook, your Google, if you have any other connected accounts, your Twitter. There we go. You can share Periscope. You can share your follow link for your account. There's a help center if you're having trouble. You can also reach out to me if you want. You can send feedback and you can read the legal, like the terms of service, privacy practices, and there's the logout button. I typically use that logout button, but the one you just saw in the settings is if you want to log out of any device you're logged in on Periscope, if you have multiple devices and you just want to make sure you're totally logged out for some, some reason. So now from here, I'm going to show you how to view a broadcast. Now, when you're new, like I said, you won't follow anyone, so you won't already have broadcasts in your feed. So there are some cool ways that you can find broadcasts. One is a, a feature called teleport, which I don't believe I can really pull up since I do follow people. I'm not sure I can actually show you the teleport button because I don't think they really put it for people who uh, already follow people. But if you don't, instead of seeing who you follow, you'll see this button that says teleport. And when you click that button, it will bring you to a random broadcast that's live right now anywhere in the world. And it's kind of a fun thing just to 
you know, you just end up in a random place and maybe you like it, maybe you don't. Uh, maybe they speak your language or maybe not. <laughs> and you can just kind of see like who's out there, what's going on and what kinds of broadcasts are out there. If you want to be a little bit more directed into like, you know, really choosing where you want to go, a little bit more structured, then you'll click this globe button on the bottom. It's the second button from the left. Click that button and you'll see the featured broadcasts at the top. There's only two featured broadcasts right now. They're actually not live anymore, which is a bit unusual. And there's different categories. So that's just featured broadcasts, kind of generic. This is pencils and paints. So this will be like art broadcasts. There's only one in that category. Local 911, only one in there. And then the list here is basically just I, I honestly don't know how they decide what broadcasts go into that list, but it's just a bunch of people who are live right now. So I think they do try to figure out what might be popular. Maybe it's based on your previous watch history. I don't work for Twitter. I don't know for sure, but there, there's, there will be a list there. Even if you don't follow anyone, there's always going to be a list of random broadcasts you can scroll through and you can see, you know, do you want to go into the broadcast that's breaking news about Trump and Russian bounty, or do you want to go, come laugh with a girl named Faith? You know, you kind of choose. What, what are you interested in? What do you want? I'll go watch and you can click in and and check out a broadcast so once you find a broadcast you want to go into let's see if i can find one that might be a good one hmm. <laughs> doesn't particularly matter uh let me let me make sure it's a live one okay here i'll go into this guy who's doing some djing I'm going to turn my volume down just so you can still hear me. Um, you can see this person is broadcasting in landscape. You can turn your phone landscape in order to have the full screen. And if you tap the screen, the comments, the hearts, who's here, the, the comment box on the bottom, that will all pop up for you. It automatically defaults to something called theater mode. So when I go sideways, you'll see on the bottom, tap anywhere to exit theater mode. Theater mode means you just want to see the video. You're not trying to see the comment, the chat stream. You're not trying to see all the hearts on the screen. You just want to see the video itself. And that's how you would do that. You can also manually put theater mode on from portrait mode by clicking these three dots on the bottom of the screen and clicking theater mode. Okay. I personally find that portrait mode broadcasts seem to do better on Periscope since it's mostly used by people using their mobile devices. There is a way to access Periscope through the desktop, but to go live is you need a third party software to go live from your computer. And I, I do that. I'll teach you that on a separate. I already have a video that teaches you that separately. So you'll see the comments floating up here and how you can comment is right here. You just tap into that box and your keyboard will pop up type in whatever you want. I'll just say, hey. And then to send it, you click this blue button. Also on, on my iPhone, it also has a send button. So either of those will work. Hey. Okay, so your comment pops right on up. All these little circles on the bottom of the screen are people's profile pictures. And these first few with the colored circles around them. You see this person has a full colored circle. This has half a circle. I'm going the wrong way. Sorry, my camera's flipped a uh, little bit less, a little bit less. There's colors around them. These people have all sent super hearts to this broadcaster while he was live. And that is, uh, I think everybody on there actually are people who have sent super hearts. So those people are all people who have contributed super hearts to that broadcaster like we talked about with the stars. Now, if there was somebody who I followed in this broadcast who had not sent super hearts, then I would see them at the end of this list. They would be at the end after a small gray dot. Everyone I follow that's in this broadcast has sent him super hearts, which is great. I'm glad I'm following generous, supportive people. Um, but that's what that means. We call them bubbles. So I can't see your bubble would mean like, oh, I don't see you for some reason. You see the people that you follow. It doesn't necessarily mean they follow you. It just means you follow them. So if you want to see who's in the broadcast visually on the bottom of the screen, make sure you follow everyone you want to see when you're in different broadcasts. If you want to look at the list of people in the broadcast, Click this number on the bottom. So he has 25 people in his broadcast right now. Get this to come in clear. Hello. Okay, 
well, hopefully you understand this, it says 25 on it. I click that, and now I can see the total number of viewers he's had. He has his location on, so I can also see exactly where he's broadcasting from. I can see who is here right now, and the people you follow, they have these little uh, people next to them. That means you follow them, they'll be at the top, and then you can see everybody as you scroll down. You can only see a certain number of people and then the rest it'll just say whatever number more viewers and that just means people that didn't fit in this initial list. So you can't see every single person but you can get a good feel for it and you'll see yourself in there too. So then when you want to close that out you can either click done on the bottom or when you're at the top, well actually oh no, you do have to click done. Done. Okay. Now, if we go back into the, the three dots, there's a few things you can see here. You can see the title of the broadcast. You can see that it's live and how many people are in the broadcast. You can see the name and username of this person. You can also follow them. Once you follow them, a check mark will appear. You can click broadcast details, which is what we were just looking at. Go back. You can retweet it if they have connected it to their Twitter and you're connected to your Twitter as well. You can share the broadcast. You can give super hearts. You can put theater mode on as I showed, or you can report the broadcast for a variety of reasons. If you click report broadcast, you'll see the options. I'm not reporting his broadcast, uh, but you can see all the possible reasons to report a broadcast. If you click it by accident, just click cancel. Now, in order, if you want to send super hearts right from this screen, you can. It's these hearts with dots, this heart with dots around it on the bottom. You click that. And then you can send a variety of different hearts. The amount of coins they cost are on the bottom. And if the person is an approved super broadcaster, they can cash these super hearts in for, for money. So if you click whatever kind you want to send, you click done, and then all you have to do is tap on the screen to send it. Um, personally, I don't have enough coins, <laughs> so it just tells me not enough coins, get more coins, keep giving super hearts, but it will pop up on the screen as all these people did. Now, if you wanna just send regular hearts, which do not cost any money, let me show you actually how to switch back. So if you're sending super hearts, you send a certain amount of super hearts and then you're done, so you were sending those, you can go back to regular hearts here. See how there's no dollar or no coin amount under there? So that means that those ones don't cost anything. Those are just the regular. That's what you'll be defaulted into even if you never click that button. And all you have to do is tap on the screen and you'll send hearts. See those blue hearts popping up? Those are mine. And you can tap at any rate you want. You can tap a bunch, you tap one. These cost nothing. They also don't give the broadcaster any money, but it's a way to give feedback to let them know, hey, I like what you're doing. And it gives you something to do with your hands when you're watching your broadcast if you get bored. <laughs> and you don't want to comment, you're just liking what you're hearing, especially with a music broadcast like this, you can tap along to the beat or whatever. It kind of lets them know you're there, you're listening, you're engaged, and you're liking it. And you're not just listening in the background, which sometimes you may do. Let's make sure I covered everything I wanted to there. I have my little cheat sheet down here. Oh, that's one thing I wanted to do. So how to reply to a comment. So I showed you how to view and follow the information about the broadcaster. Um, actually, what I didn't show you, so if I'm going to click these three dots, I showed you that you can see his username and you can follow him, but if you click his, his name or his username, you'll see his profile here, which has his bio, like we set up earlier. It has his name, his username, tells you whether or not you're following him. You can turn notifications on or off for specific channels, which I love. It'll show you if he's live right now. And it'll tell you when they joined the app, when they made their account. It'll also show you how many super hearts they've received, how many broadcasts they've done that you can go watch, how many people they're following, and how many followers they have. And then to get off of that, you just click anywhere off of there, then done. Now, if you want to view information about one of the people in the broadcast, if you already see them on the bottom, uh, well, actually, no, sorry, they changed that. 
So see these comments here? If I wanted to look up, okay, who's this person? I can click them. I can either reply. If I hit reply, it will automatically put their username, this <laughs> admittedly kind of creepy username, <laughs> into the chat, and then I can write my response to them. Maybe I'll just put I, an I, I emoji just to show you what it looks like in the chat. Okay, I don't know. It says I'm watching you, so I'm putting the, the eyes because now I'm watching them too. Send it, and it will look like that in the chat, and they'll see that. They'll get almost like a notification. One person actually did tag me earlier when I said, hey. So you can see up here this little black arrow. This black arrow, and then there's also haptic feedback, so my phone buzzes very lightly when somebody tags me. It gets my attention, and then if I wanted to respond back to that person, I would click this click reply, just like we just did. Okay, so from here, what else did I want? Oh, so when you click their their account here, you can also click, or their comment, sorry. You can also click view profile. It'll tell you their name, their username. You can follow them. See how it says user has not provided a profile description. So he hasn't actually set up a bio. He does have a profile picture, which is better than nothing. It shows when he joined, there's no super hearts. So we know he doesn't have any super hearts. And it shows who does follow him that you also follow. You can see he's done zero broadcasts. He's following 156 people and he has 79 followers. So you can kind of get a feel for who's in the chat and who's commenting as well. And that's how you can follow them. If you find someone, you know, they're saying something funny or they're talking about their own broadcasts and you want to follow them, you can do that very easily. Okay. All right. So that's everything in terms of being a viewer. I do recommend that you view broadcasts before you go live just to kind of get a feel for how everything works. You want to be able to know how to click a comment, how to look at somebody to figure out their name, how to reply to a comment. You know, you, you kind of want to know how to do this, how to look at your own details and stats, how to view profiles of the people in the chat. So you can even comment in your own streams. Maybe you want to put a link or something in there. So this way you have a feel of how to do that and how broadcasting kind of flows normally so you can get a feel for the community before you start going live if you want. When you're ready, and once you follow people, you'll actually see them here in your feed, which is this little home button when you first go on. This guy's cooking some steak. All right. You'll, oh, you'll see either people you follow or people that you follow who have shared broadcasts or called into their broadcast, they will also be in this feed. So it's a little bit of like, you know, degrees of separation. Like, I don't think I follow this person, but somebody either that I do follow either called in or shared his broadcast. So it's in my feed. So you'll start as you follow people, you'll start to get more and more broadcasts in here that you can go through. After their broadcasts are done, I'm just scrolling down you'll see this recent and ones that you didn't watch. You can watch by themselves. So you can just, you can click play on watch and it will just play through every broadcast that of the people that you followed or called in or shared out. It'll show you all of those broadcasts back to back to back in like a playlist, or you can just kind of scroll through and see which ones who went live that you might want to go check out. You'll also see your own recently completed broadcasts. Now, to go live, you click this. Oh, actually, before we go live, let's actually just skip skip the live button just to show you the last, because I've showed you all the buttons on the bottom of the screen with the exception of this bell. Click the bell. There's a little red dot to it. That means there's notifications. This is your notification section. It's labeled activity on the top, and it will show you the people who followed you, the people who watched your replay. And I think that's pretty much it. Yep followed you and watched your replay. That's about it. <laughs> and the people you already follow, their bubbles will come up first in these little lists. And you can scroll through and see kind of who's watching your broadcast, who followed you, and keep track of that that way. There is no direct messaging on here, so you won't get any messages about that. There's also no commenting on a broadcast after it's completed, so you won't have any notifications like that. I kind of love the simplicity of this. It's just who followed me, who watched my broadcast, who watched my replays, right? So that's a, a fun way to tell. You can also actually, um, let me show you. So if you click your into your profile area, um, it won't usually bring you here. Actually, it'll bring you to, it'll bring you here. 
So you have to click this little button up here to really get to your profile. Then when you're in here, you can click broadcast and look at your replays. You can click any broadcast. I'm just gonna pause it. So I have to watch myself stream. <laughs> and you can uh, click the three dots, broadcast details, and you can see once a broadcast has finished, you can see how many live views and how many replay views that broadcast got. I just did this broadcast a little while ago and it was pretty short and somewhat uneventful. It was me basically getting ready to make this video. And I can see the replay viewers. If I click live viewers, it will turn red. And oh, I thought it would show me my, my live viewers. Oh, see, it says live viewers down here. Oh, here we go here, live viewers here. So you can see a chunk of them and then it'll just say more at the bottom. And then you can also click replay viewers. It'll give you your stats for your replay views. And then you can see your replay viewers with more. All right. What else can we see from here? This is, it's, and it'll look just the same, even though it's your broadcast, you can retweet it, you can share it, but you can also edit it. We'll get, I'll show you that in just a second. You can hide your broadcast, which means that you can, you'll can you still see it in your broadcast section, but nobody else will be able to find it or see it. And you can always unhide it if you decide to. If you delete your broadcast, you will lose the broadcast forever. You won't be able to bring it back at any point, And you also will lose any super hearts you receive during that broadcast. So I never delete any broadcast. At the most, I hide my replays, but I don't even really do that. Most of the time, I just leave them up. And you can also watch your own broadcast on theater mode. All right, so to edit a broadcast, click edit. You can change the title after you end the broadcast. You can change the start point of your broadcast. So if you don't want it to start right at the beginning, if you got into a certain subject or you got kind of off track and then you started talking about something interesting or something funny happened, you can drag using this slider to a different, to a different starting point. Oops. You can change the thumbnail of your broadcast. So this is the picture that they'll see when they're scrolling through. So you can decide what picture you wanna have there. Actually kind of like that one. And then save changes if you make any. Saved, good, Back. done, awesome. This star button will show you that this broadcast received super hearts. You can see this not only on your own broadcast, but you'll also see this on other people's broadcasts as long as they've received super hearts. It will show you the total number of super hearts you received as well as your contributors. Your top contributor will have a special annotation here. It will have this little crown of stars on their picture and it will show their full bio. And then everyone else will be below them. So the circle, the colored circle around the outside of them shows who sent the most super hearts. So the full circle is whoever has sent the most super hearts. And then the percentage of that circle will, will be the other people. So if they sent half as many super hearts, it'll be a complete half circle. If they sent a tiny portion, it'll just be a little kind of colored dot around their picture. And you can easily follow people from here by clicking this button if you want that little add button okay if a broadcast is live and has super hearts let's go back to that dj that we were using as our example earlier when you're looking at a live broadcast that has super hearts that's not your own you'll see the number down here sometimes it'll have the number sometimes it'll be just the star when you click that, you'll see active contributors. This means people who are still in the broadcast and you'll see contributors who have left. So you'll even be able to see who sent super hearts that are no longer present in the broadcast. Once the broadcast is ended, it'll just have them listed in order of who sent the most super hearts with the least on the bottom. Now let's talk about how to go live. This red dot in the middle is your go live button. You click that and you have your choices. It'll tell you if you've never used it before. I, I logged out and back in, so it's giving me the notification, so you'll see this. Go live together. Invite viewers to be guests in your broadcast. They'll be heard by everyone, and you can add or remove them at any time. Got it. All right, so it's just like, uh, hi. <laughs> it's just like we were looking at on Twitter, where you can put in your title. Um, oops, other people are going live here. Get out of here. You can put in your title. You can use your location. I personally do not broadcast with my location on, so it'll say precise location sharing off. 
You can do an audio only broadcast. You can limit your chat. I'm just trying not to go live by accident here. Ah, okay. Which is means only people that you follow can chat. Do you see that little pop up notice there? Let me show that again. Only users you follow can chat. If you turn it off, very tricky here. Ah, everybody can chat. I pretty much never use that button. This will share your broadcast automatically to Twitter when you go live. It'll just put out a tweet that says you're live with the title of your broadcast. This means that you have super hearts turned on. You can turn that, you can turn any of these on or off. It'll turn gray if you turn it off. And then call in guests, just like on Twitter. When you're ready, you click go live. If you decide you don't want to go live, just hit the X up at the top. Up here, you can choose which audience you want to use. So if you have groups that you want to share into, like I have my own group of people I broadcast to, um, then you can just click that group. So when you go live, I'm actually just going to click go live because why not? When you click go live, this is what it will look like. So you'll see your broadcast. This is what everyone's going to see when they come in and when they watch on the replay. So feel free to talk to your replay viewers now if you want. It says you are now live at the bottom. It'll show you how many people are coming in. And you'll see the people coming in. If they're a moderator, there will be this designation in the front of their name. If they're a super fan, they'll have this flame next to their name. And then you can see the comments start to come in. Just like I said, if you click here, you can also comment on your own broadcast. And a really easy way to reply to someone when you're live, you won't use this, but I meant to mention this earlier. When you're replying to a comment, if you actually just click um, somebody's bubble here, okay, it's not, it's not, it's not working, but um, there are, when you're in someone else's broadcast, when you click their bubble on the bottom, it will automatically just put their username in the chat so you can reply back to them easily. Hi everyone, hi, hi, hi. I am well, I am, I'm making a YouTube video, so I'm gonna end this now, thanks for, Wait, I'm like talking. Okay, I'm gonna end this now. So thanks for thanks for coming in and being my my guinea pigs. Bye. If you just gently swipe down from the middle here on the screen, you don't want to swipe down from the top because your phone will probably pull down your notifications like that. So if you just go, oh, I froze. I froze the broadcast. Well, that's lovely. If you click the X, okay, it's totally frozen. Oh, there we go. I came back. It's blacked. It's, it's crashed, basically. So try not to do that. That's why we don't want to drag down from the top. You go from the middle, just kind of slightly drag down from the middle and click Stop Broadcast. You can also switch to an audio only broadcast right here and you can flip your camera there. Or to flip your camera, you just double tap on the screen and it'll flip automatically. So you just gently swipe down or hit the X there. Either way, you'll get this, this uh, options on the top. Click Stop Broadcast. Bye, guys. And then you'll immediately get the choices to edit the broadcast, to view the stats, how many people watched, how many super hearts you got, how long it was, um, and moderator actions. So if anyone had muted anyone in your broadcast, you can click the moderator actions, you'll see the comment, you'll see who, who muted them, and you can easily block people from there if you choose to. You'll also see this rating where you can say how your broadcasting experience was. If it was less than five stars, which it wasn't, but I'm just going to click this to show you. They ask, how can we improve? And you can put your feedback in here. You can pick options and you can type in the chat and click submit. Oh, Annie, actually, even if you hit five stars, what went well? And you can tell them that as well and submit. To get out of here, you just click the X, which is the same way you get out of any broadcast. If I can actually touch it on here. <laughs> X, there we go. All right. I think that's just about everything. I just thought of one last little trick pro tip that I'll teach you here. If you are looking at a broadcast from your lobby, that's what I call it when you're in the home page and you're looking through all the different people who are live. If you want to watch a broadcast from the lobby without actually entering the broadcast, there's this little tiny button. See that little See that? That little speaker button with the X next to it? If you touch that, 
it'll turn to be speaker on. And if your audio is actually on, you'll be able to hear it from the lobby. So that's a cool little trick as well. Hopefully this helps you with going live on Periscope or Twitter live. I hope you enjoyed this. Comment below, let me know if you have any questions, if you need to reach out to me, it is Next Juice Everywhere, N-E-X Juice, J-U-I-C-E, -E, or you can check out my website and help me to keep broadcasts and, and uh, my broadcasting channel and videos like this going. Thanks so much. This has been A Moment in Time with Taylor.